So welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Shubham Shah and I'm a third year junior resident and from Department of Radio Diagnosis from IPGM Kolkata. And today I'm going to present our paper that is MRI and multi-director CT evaluation of craniovertebral junction abnormalities, in short, CVJ abnormalities. As you all know that the craniovertebral junction being the transit zone between the cranium and spine, it is one of the most complex and dynamic region of the spine and the anatomy of the CV junction is also a little bit complicated. Both the congenital as well as acquired disease process can affect the CV junction and they are common in all the age groups and almost equal in both the sexes. What are the objectives of a study? First is to establish the role of imaging for pre-treatment evaluation of the CV junction abnormality. Second is to outline the normal anatomy as well as the variants which is commonly seen in the CV junction. And third, we'll also try to systematically classify the frequently detected CVJ abnormalities. One point to note here that when we did literature review, we did not find that amount of material about our study. So our study will add a value in the literature as well as we can also get an idea about the demographic, socio-demographic profile of the patient, hence who are getting affected by CV junction abnormalities. Coming to the material and method, it is a single institution based prospective type of descriptive study and the sample size was 55 and it occurred between January 2019 to August 2020 and we used the 3 test like MR and Philly 16 slice machine. About the inclusion criteria, all the suspected patients who are having a suspicion of CV junction abnormalities of both the sexes and all the ages were included in your study. Only exclusion criteria was if the patient has any contact to do MR like the patient having any metallic implant or the patient that is claustrophobic or the if the patient is post-operative then we exclude those patients. Informed consents were taken from all the patients before including the study. These are the results. Our total sample size was 55 out of which the 35 patients were male. So male patients were predominant. Second, although the uh, both type, although the congenital as well as traumatic as well as degenerative patients were there, uh, the predominant age of presentation was between the 40 to 49 years. That is the fifth decade. Third is third is that the congenital that is the congenital abnormalities were the predominant in the CV junction abnormalities followed by degenerative changes. One point to note here that in our study, one patient may have one or two disorders. For example, the patient may have any segmentation abnormalities at the congenital part, as well as patient had age-related degenerative changes that is affecting the CV junction. So one patient may have one or more disease process simultaneously. Next, the uh, as, as you can see that the congenital abnormalities were predominantly affect, uh, predominant in our study. Among the congenital abnormality, the os odontorium followed by the cranio occipital atlanto occipital assimilation or rachis and the rachis cases was predominantly affected congenital abnormality in our study. Coming to the atlanto axial instability, which is one of the most dreaded complications and which is affecting the CB junction. Os odontium was responsible for 14 of the patients, or majority of the patients who had atlanto axial instability had atlanto had os odontium, followed by due to the trauma. Also, a significant number of patients who are affected by the degenerative changes has had also atlanto axial instability. In the trauma patients specifically, the most commonly bone which is get involved was dense. Next, as you can you can see that this is the this is the age distribution of the congenital abnormalities at the CBJ and fourth to fifth decade. Fourth to fifth decade it was the predominant in this age group. Fourth to fifth decade was the age group that was presenting in with the symptom of the CBJ abnormalities. One point just I want to mention here: all the patients, suppose in all general population, and the patient may have the CV junction, but it is usually not symptomatic. The symptomatic age group in our study was between the fourth to fifth decade. Coming to the trauma, you can see that the third decade of the third decade is the common age group who is presenting with the trauma. Coming to the degenerative patient, as it is expected, that the old age group, that is the fifth to sixth decade, that is the fifth to sixth decade, if that is the fifth to sixth decade, were common in the degenerative changes. When we compare the age group distribution between the congenital abnormalities and the degenerative changes, we found that the fourth to fifth decade, fourth to fifth decade, it was the common age group where the congenital as well as degenerative changes were predominant. After that, definitely the age-related degenerative changes predominantly, that is the fifth to sixth decade after that. So the point is that even though general population may have CV junction abnormalities, it is not usually always symptomatic. The symptomatic age group in our study was presently in between the fourth to fifth decade. 
coming to in the atlanto axial instability it is well known fact that if the patient has increased adi interval he have or she have may have atlanto axial instability but one point to note that even after having normal atlanto dental interval the patient may have atlanto axial instability in our case the number was 30 So in summary, the most common abnormality is was due to the congenital abnormality followed by degenerative. Among congenital abnormality, also odontic was the most common. Among trauma patient type two odontic fracture was the most common. About sixty seven percent of the patient who have congenital anomalies also had degenerative changes, and fifty five percent of the patients who had degenerative changes had atlanto axial instability also. So degenerative changes is one of the most common cause of the atlanto axial instability patient in patients having the segmentation anomaly. Also, the hundred percent patients of rheumatoid arthritis patients had atlanto axial instability, but our the number of the rheumatoid patient patients in our study was only two, so that significant it was not that much of significant. Coming to the discussion, that congenital abnormality was the most common abnormality, and congenital anomalies was although common in all the age groups, more or less. Yes, and trauma was prevalent in the third decade, and basilar invasion and platysmia are. Not that much common compared to os odontium, and atlanto axial instability is the most dreaded complication. Always to look for severe abnormality, and most common cause was os odontium followed by degenerative followed by trauma cases. This is the anatomy of the atlanto axial region. That is the CB junction. The most important ligament was the transverse ligament, which is a part of the cruciate ligament. As you can see, this is the transverse ligament. Other ligament to involve is atlanto at anterior longitudinal ligament, which is continuous as atlanto. Occipital membrane. So this is the base. This this is the representative images of our study. This is from the first is the congenital. As you can see, this is the basilar imagination. This is the three lines actually here. This is the Chamberlain line. One is the MacGregor line and the MacRae line. As you all see that this is the posterior part of the heart palate and to the occipital protuberance. If this is approximately greater than five millimeter above the Mac. Uh, above the Chamberlain lines or four millimeter and above the MacGregor line, it is definitely the basilar con. Imagination. This is the os odontium. This is the most common congenital abnormality. It is well corticated at bone, and it is a well corticated. This is the os odontium, which is which is well corticated bone. This is the well corticated bone, which differentiates it from the type two fracture of the dens. Okay. This is the os terminally. This is or this is the os terminally. As you can see, that this is due to the failure of the fusion between the terminal ossicle with the rest of the odontoid. This is the congenital one of the patient. This is the morcu patient. This is the meco polysaccharosis. As you can see, the dens is severely hyperplastic. Please also note the beaking of the vertebra is present. This is the trauma. This is the trauma. Or this is the patients having the trauma to the dens. The type two dens fracture that is the through the base of the odontoid was the most common in our study. Coming to the atlanto axial subluxation, at ADI interval in CT, if it is greater than two millimeter, this is indicator of atlanto dental and increase interval or atlanto dental subluxation. This is the degenerative changes as you can see that the atlanto dental interval is reduced and there is sclerosis, there is osteophytes, which are indicative of degenerative changes. This is the inflammatory conditions. This is the one of the one patient, two patients were of the rheumatoid arthritis. You can see the panas formation, which is enhancing on the contrast study also and This is the periodontal pornus. There is erosion of the dens vertebra also. Coming to the infective conditions, only one patient was there. This is the tuberculosis. As you can see, that this is the pre and para vertebral abscess, which is enhancing, re-enhancing, and with occipital bone extension. This is a new plastic uh, condition. This was not common in our study. This is one of the example is osteochondroma of the C2 arch. Atlanto axial subluxation. This is the rotatory subluxation. As you can see, this is the 3D image and the There is asymmetry between the dens and with the lateral masses of the atlas vertebra. So whether CT or MR, uh, this is both uh, CT and MR should be uh, equally used in conjunction as CT gives us the bony architecture well, whereas MRI gives us the soft tissue architecture well. So we should use CT and MR both simultaneously. So these are my references. Thank you.